Round of 16, and we've changed our fantasy teams. Well, we sort of had to, didn't we? So let's take a look at it. Good morning and welcome back to the pink table. We're getting ready for tonight. It's the round of 16 kicking off at 6 o'clock with Denmark. Um, that's going to be a really interesting game. And then tonight, obviously, at 9 o'clock, there's a big game between Italy and Austria. So we're going to go over our fantasy teams for the round of 16. As you can see, I've done progressively worse. Match day one, I'm scoring 55. Match day two, 50. Match day three, 48. Uh, Depay Lukaku getting me a lot of the score there, but my midfield was absolutely shocking. Kuchka got me none. Uh, defense, not so great. Denier, the only one scoring above the three-point mark. Uh, all of my defense conceded goals, unfortunately, and Dumfries was not scoring. But if you can look at my bench, not much coming off the bench there as well. So there were a lot of changes, uh, a lot of team, big teams doing turnovers, so some players weren't playing, etc., etc. Um, for example, Insigne, I really wanted him to be on, but that didn't happen. But going into round of 16, we were able to change, I think, as everyone else is playing fantasy, you get to change your team quite a lot because you get to sub out the players that have been knocked out. And this is what I've been left with. So sticking with a 3-4-3, remaining Courtois in goals, I've just noticed I actually have Spinazzola on the bench. So I actually might change that right now. And I'm feeling that Gusens is going to have a good game. So I'm going to actually swap out Denaya because against Portugal, he might concede a goal. And I think Spinazzola is going to be providing a lot more assists there. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. Okay. So we have Courtois in goals. Dumfries, Gusens, and Spinazzola in defense. I think there's a lot of assists coming from there and possibly goals. So I think that's a very point-heavy defense. They are playing against Austria, Czech Republic, which we might be able to get clean sheets out of those two. Touch wood for Italy. And Gerson's against England. That's the only one that might be suspect there. Also, obviously, Courtois against Portugal. Uh, my midfield is Italy heavy on the more than 50%. Insigne Berardi against Austria. Sterling against Germany. And we nailed them against Czech Republic. I think there's a lot of goals in that midfield as well. Up front, we have Depay, Kane, and Lukaku. So nothing's changed there. Lukaku is still my captain against Porto, Porto, well, Porto Portugal. I don't know if I want to do that. I might change my captain either to Depay or Wijnaldum. I think the uh, Holland are going to be scoring a bit against Czech Republic. What do you think, Lane? Yeah, I was quite tempted uh, with uh, Wijnaldum as well. I've got him on my team, as you'll see shortly. Um, I think I might have kept it with Luke. No, I think I did change captain. I can't remember to who right now, so we're going to have to wait a second to double-check that. Um, Wijnaldum's always involved, whether it be the assist or the actual finish. Uh, Lukaku as well for his team. So I think you got good odds either way there. You know what? I'm going to do this. For everyone to see live here, I'm going to make Insigne captain. I have a good feeling there. Done. Locked in. No one's changing that. Everything's going to lie on Mr. Lorenzo over there. But uh, otherwise, I think my formation, if it was a real formation, uh, if this was actually a fielded team, it would be very attack heavy. Uh, defense, there's not much going on here. Like, now, now that you made your captain, I think I remember who I did for mine, and I think I followed the same sort of guideline that you did. I don't think we selected the same player, but I was also like, by Italia, captain. You go immobile, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is my formation. Um, just to give you guys a reasoning here, Kane... I should probably sell Kane. Uh, I think he's not going to score here. Uh, it's a tough game against Germany, tough midfield, well, defenders. Uh, I could probably swap him out for maybe someone that's playing an easier team. I think that would actually be a clever move right now to do, Elaine, because who are France playing? They're playing Switzerland, correct? Correct. Okay, so if you guys don't mind, I'm going to remove Kane here live. So that gives me a good 12 million budget. And let me go get a French forward one second benzema or mbappe i am going to go oh i can get mbappe at the same price okay mbappe benzema mbappe benzema i'm gonna go for mbappe screw it done confirm boom okay that is my formation now captain locked in uh, so yeah, the only reason I took out Kane there is he has tough opposition. My team is trying to be focused mainly on weaker opposition. That's why maybe Gosens is my only doubt in defense because I might want to bring Krakai in there because I think Denmark can hold uh, Wales to a clean sheet. Um, but I think Gosens is going to be able to give me more points. But I suppose a clean sheet gets you the same amount of points. So yeah, as you can see, I'm kind of confused. I'm all over the place. But let me know what you guys think. If I make any sudden changes, I'll let you guys know in my next video.
Okay, so let's take a look at my team, Tevere Nord. Uh, we did not do well, like Damien, doing progressively worse, but my match day three was so terrible that it allowed Damien to jump me by almost 20 points into top place. Oh, it looks, so, like a, looks like an Easter egg hunt, yeah. Yeah, not great. Um, so, as you can see, uh, during the match day, I tried to bring in uh, Lima and Ristevski, dropping Spinazzola and Barella because they didn't play for Italy. At the end of the day, Ristevski never came onto the field for Macedonia, so he scored me zero anywhere. Lima was a good move, as he did land up scoring me some points. And uh, yeah, overall, my team did really poorly. Did uh, Tielemans play? Uh, Tielemans landed up not playing, no. Uh -huh. Yeah, so at the end of the day, this was my big problem, is a lot of the players that I was expecting points from never fielded. And then the other players that did, Sabitzer, Malinowski, and uh, Weikhorst, not getting me anything. Mbappe, despite France getting two goals, was not involved, and Lukaku and Donnarumma coming to my rescue with their 18 points out of 32. So more than 50% of my points coming from two players. So absolutely shocking. Um, this time round, I've gone complete Antonio Conte with my team and got rid of everybody who doesn't fit my new idea and brought in quite a different uh, team. As you can see, I'm heavily based on two clubs that I'm expecting to do really well at the tournament being Holland and Italy, and the rest of my players are pretty much made up by German uh, by Germany players and Lukaku. So I've gone ahead and selected the teams that I think are going to do really well, and I've gone ahead and based my team off that. So in defense, we've gone with Gigi Donnarumma. Um, I'm expecting Italy to get a clean sheet there, so hopefully points. Uh, De Frey, Spinazzola, and Dumfries could potentially all get clean sheets against the teams that they're playing. And then, of course, you've got the goal threat and assist threat of Dumfries and Spinazzola. Tony Rudiger might not get a clean sheet against England, but chances are that the German team, if anybody's going to do it, it will be them. Found out that Kai Havertz is quoted as a midfielder, so I could not say no to that, and I grabbed him um, into my midfield as he offers goals and assists. I believe he's being played pretty much as a false nine for Germany, so surprising to find him in this role. I've gone and put him next to Barella, who offers a lot for Italy with the clean sheets as well. Uh, Giorgino Vinaldum, like I said to you, uh, is in a team that potentially offers clean sheets like the defenders and has been involved in goals for his team consistently for over the last year. And then three big front men up front that I'm expecting to do well. I did move my captaincy across from Lukaku to Immobile as I'm expecting Italy to do particularly well. Um, I hope that doesn't come back to bite me, but I do feel a lot more confident about this uh, match day lineup and I'm expecting to make the points up and catch Damien back in first place. So not great overall um, the last week, but I think that we're looking a lot better this time around. Yeah, it's looking good. Um, I think Barella is the only question mark I'll maybe say because like a midfield, as you said, there's clean sheets, but that's why I think Berardi being marked as midfielder was a clever thing in my sense, or Insigne. Well, yeah, like like yeah. I didn't say, I do have Freuler and De Bruyne sitting on the bench. Like I'm tal oh. talented midfield right here. Yeah, but the problem with that is you're going to have to decide tonight whether or not to sub up Barella. No, exactly. But that's why Barella is on the field. Okay. Yeah, so interesting. I like that you went defense heavy. You have two center backs, which is a bit risky. And I think you're going for the clean sheet points there, which is fine. But I think the um, only thing I would suggest there is maybe put in uh, another defender that's similar to like Gerson's for Germany because there's maybe the clean sheet there and points you know what I mean but I suppose yeah the only difference between me and you is Pinazzola, Dumfries and Gerson's is what I have and I have really good on the bench but listen I like it the, the fact that you have De Bruyne on the bench is also really interesting um, I would maybe try squeeze him on and I would suggest maybe taking a Vicost because I don't know if he's actually going to start huh? okay well if you uh, if you can safely say that to me I don't know if I can safely say that yeah, but I, correct me if I'm wrong. He didn't start the last game, and I think it's not yes, but, what. But I think that was like Italy rest your best players. Yeah. So according to this, he's not going to start again, man. Like I think Holland realized after the first game that they need they're much better playing at a like a fast pace, and he's not the type. Like he's a great player to bring on if you're losing. Be that Torre cross the ball in. Okay. But, well, I'm, uh, I'm happy with that change. Like, like yeah. I was just saying, the fact that Kai Havertz is being registered as a midfielder for me technically means I'm playing with three goal getters anyway. So I'm happy with that change. And uh, thank you for giving me the heads up on that. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that in, confirmed. And yeah, that's my team for the round of 16. <laughs>
let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, hopefully this time I do a bit better. Yeah, so those are our teams for um, this round, uh, Match Day 16. Well, not Match Day 16, the round of last 16's fantasy teams. Uh, let us know what you guys think of our team. Uh, once again, I'll add in our description our league. Uh, if you guys want to join, it's still open to entry. Um, depending on what points you guys got, you probably might be doing much better than us already. So just hop on in there. Um, and yeah, we'll let you know how it goes. But I think we have good teams going into this round. Yeah, I feel a lot more confident going into this round. Uh, I'm happy with my team. We can't do well. I particularly can't do worse than the last round. So fingers crossed going into this one. If you haven't already, please like this video. If it's your sort of thing, share it around, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on The Pink Table.